Uh, I would like to thank the 10 innovators uh, and wish them good luck. Uh, they were great uh, ideas. I invite you now to enjoy a fireside chat with Mr. Rudy Shoshani, the founder of DX Talks, and Ms. Corinne Iyeme, venture capitalist and investment manager at IM Ventures, while the jury deliberates and selects the finalists. Good luck to all. Recording in progress. Again, let me introduce our guests, Mr. Rudy Shushani, the founder of DX Talks, and Ms. Corina Iyemi, venture capitalist and investment manager at IM Ventures. You're the pro, you should be leading. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we have to start somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, welcome all on this uh, beautiful day, I think, even though with, uh, it was hard to come. But uh, that's the part of uh, innovation. And we have to reinvent, innovate, and reinvent ourselves, same as the Phoenix. Uh, yeah, it is on. All right, yeah, I think that's better. So uh, we're going to be talking about innovation today and then how we're going to be, you know, integrating it this into our uh, Lebanon and the region and how it's gonna go and where we wanna go. So uh, we'll start with the first one. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna you know, go directly at it and say that you know, usually crisis fuel innovation and you know, entrepreneurs are the angel, are the en en sorry, en engine of the innovation. Therefore, despite you know, all the negativity that we've seen for the past few years, be it in terms of Corona, you know, on a macro level or on a micro level about Lebanon, today we've been pushed, whether we like it or not, five years into the future in terms of technology. And we've seen that across sectors. To start with is obviously the ultra healthcare, where we've seen a vaccine being produced by a whole new technology. It took a year and a half versus an average of five years, you know, usually. And then, you know, we can extrapolate into the drones, into the ghost kitchen, the UK version of the ghost kitchen. We can even think about the food delivery businesses and all those sectors from year to year are now increasing by folds. So we're talking about multiply by two. We don't say anymore 20 or 50% increase, it's folds. In Lebanon, the situation is even worse. So the problems are even worse. And I guess, you know, we've seen it today with the, with the 10 pitches. And I, you know, I loved how it end. Uh, he was talking about a startup that got incorporated in Lebanon. Yalla boss, I've seen, I've seen the girls. It was impressive technology. 
But because of Lebanon, they fell. And he was very clear at saying that it's their revenue model that actually made them collapse. And he's just doing the same, but from a different perspective. So despite the negativity, we can still find talent. Yeah, we need to find opportunities. <laughs> That's the idea. And then today, when we talk about innovation, you know, uh, it's the priority of every agenda of every government. And every uh, startup or every you know, NGO or every ecosystem. So we really need to take that ecosystem or that innovation part and drive it more so we can have a better uh, outcome. And then so people can start seeing the outcomes. And this is where Lebanon, we have to take that challenge that we have and then drive it into something else. Take the energy, don't despair, but on the contrary, take that energy and then change it. So if we look back to uh, what's happening in Lebanon, well, let's ask, what's innovation? It's the main pillar of any government or any society. It's driving the future. So if we prioritize it in our government, and I think they are not prioritizing, of course, uh, but if we look at what's happening in BDD or Beritech, they are the uh, core of this. We need to take that experience and multiply it over and over and over and over uh, throughout Lebanon because we have talents spread across the region, not just in Beirut. So we need to really thrive that uh, spirit into our young and old. You know, entrepreneurs are not just youth entrepreneurs. Everybody can be an entrepreneur. And especially, you know, the most successful entrepreneurs are in their 40s and in their 50s. You'll be surprised. Why? Because they have all of the experiences, all the failures, everything. And then this is where possibly more uh, percentage will be. Uh, on a successful level. So we need to drive this and we need to prioritize. In my opinion, Lebanon is still in the old uh, industrial age. We need to go to the fourth industrial revolution, follow that technology, not just the technology, innovation could be, as Dr. Fadlo said earlier on, it could be on anything. We've seen the medical, uh, how it was you know, really disrupted. Uh, so we need to spread in Lebanon, I think, capitalize on some technological advancements because this is the easiest you can, you know, uh, scale it and the least maybe investment, but you can take it hard. And then if you look at the Lebanese uh, stories from Hop In, which is a Lebanese guy who got, you know, a $7 billion evaluation a couple of weeks back. Why? Because he was, he had a great idea, right time, right place and it's not incorporated in Lebanon. We look at uh, Anghami, the same thing. Everything was happening here and suddenly it went away because of the priorities of the government. Uh, we need to focus more, scale more, try to create successful events, try to create successful uh, ideas. And the most important thing, not just dream, but execute. That's the one advice in the end. It's about the execution part because all of these ideas are beautiful. If you don't execute them, they're always on a drawing. So, yeah. I'm going to draw a little bit on Lebanon and zoom in since we've been, you know, uh, investing in Lebanon since 2005. Um, we invested for the past five years in early stage businesses, around 24 investments. And just last year, we've closed 11 uh, growth, stage, uh, growth, growth stage technology. I'm going to talk about take a little bit the ecosystem so that we see, and I'm always going to be, you know, the one with positive news. So today in Lebanon for the past... There's no bad news here. <laughs> <laughs> for the past five years, you know, just before, uh, let's say that, uh, you know, just before the Thawra, around $225 million were invested in the technology sector in Lebanon. Hi there, it's Don Deal. And they were spread around 120 companies, all right? So 120 companies, obviously, uh, Thawra started, free fall of the Lebanese uh, currency, add to it the corona, you know, and, uh, last but not least, the blast. What happened out of the 120 companies? Obviously, the majority disappeared. So, however, when companies disappear and they're not created, it established a whole series of second-time entrepreneurs. So despite, you know, all the closures that we've seen, be it a quicker death because of corona and the free fall, or is it they weren't doing better? We will never know, Maheke. Some of them were bound to disappear. They just disappeared faster. And usually in VC, we just talk about a 90% probability of success. So it's not so bad. 
So, uh, so those, this is a, a second generation of entrepreneurs that we're going to be seeing for the years to come. And, and I guess this is going to bring a lot of maturity to the VC market and to the startups market in Lebanon. This is from one side. So uh, from, the, from the second perspective, it's, you know, what happened to the one, to the people that stayed, and, you know, the 10% that succeeded from the 120, they got further round of financing. And what's nice about, you know, I'm going to fall back on Anghami. Today, Anghami is one of the success stories coming out from Lebanon. However, the Lebanese market have seen four exits this year. Starting January of this year, we've seen four exits. And, you know, I'm sure every one of you have heard of Sinkers. Uh, uh, inspired, came and acquired the whole equity stake. Uh, we have uh, Treasury Express. The VCs went out at 3x valuation. So we're actually seeing that those international companies are coming and acquiring the talent of the Lebanese. So it is bad, but if we put all the sentimental things on the side and we just think about an economy, we can do better for the years to come. Akid, we have more expertise. And, you know, entrepreneurship is not, you know, when we sleep one day and we wake up one, another day, it was a very nice presentation, and then things, it doesn't work this way, really. <laughs> yeah, right. So this is, you know, we invest in people and we invest in ideas. Obviously, the ideas are great, but, you know, as you said, the main thing is in execution. In venture capital, we see around 200 to 250 entrepreneurs per year. You can be sure that more than 15 come in with the exact same idea. So, Labra Bittenfi is really, and this is where I know to know where is the team slide. Alula, apparently, it's in the videos or in the uh, documents that were received by the jury. But you know, the team is the essence of everything that we do. I know the team can alternate the idea and shift it from a year to a year, it needs to adapt to the local market. And I think this is the question now with, you know, what's next? What's in the region? What's the priorities in the region? Where is the trend going? And this is what we have to discover. We, we always say that Lebanon is a small market. We agree on that. But having something here, uh, you know, you could test it, scale it and whatever, success but always look out on the, on the region and on the global scale and see what's happening. If we look a little bit back in, uh, since 2008, because that was uh, a really uh, you know, hard time financially, but in the same time, look at all of these you know, uh, ideas that came out. 2020 is another eye-opener, and many ideas will come. Already we've seen huge ideas coming and huge startups uh, already forming internationally or locally or in the region. And this is where we must take also that we, we, are, we can be, you know, uh, we can have ideas, we can capitalize on the, on the, on the crisis that we have uh, lived in and we passed. So uh, if you look at the region, we must see also what the region wants. That's something very crucial. Because sometimes we think our idea, you know, might work here. Because we've been focused more uh, on our current and national, uh, you know, maybe survival on the uh, agro side for the last maybe two years. You know, this is something that plays. But of course, uh, if we think more towards what's coming in the next three to five years, and where do we want to be? And what is that one thing we want to solve? It's always about the customer or the citizen, you know, making their life better. And I would say also on the technological side, uh, we, we've seen AI and blockchain taking off the world, and this is the future technology. So, and investments can happen easily there. Uh, you know, you don't need a lot of you know big investments to really do such a thing. Uh, versus traditional industrial, uh, that innovation can continue. Of course, I'm not saying that, but uh, you know, we need to scale on and uh, try to change. Uh, perspectives and try to change uh, verticals. Uh, the future is very bright. What's happening in the region? Uh, I've, I've just came from Dubai and Jitex. Uh, what I saw there is like a dream. And uh, I'm not comparing to there, of course, they have a different dynamics and everything. But we have, you know, the core, we have the people, we need to stop that brain drain that we are facing and change the, the ideas into scaling and more successful uh, exit and successful ideas and successful execution and successful uh, startups, not just, you know, uh, again, ideas or so on. 
Well, in investment, we call it the, the three X factor. So whenever an entrepreneur comes to us, we ask him, what's your secret sauce? What's the three X factor that you do better than the competition? So that's why for anyone who's pitching, again, I didn't see the full deck, but I hope that there is, and I'm sure there is a competition analysis where you see you know, what's, what else is out there. And then we try to, so, to see what you guys do better, and they should be in three folds. Is you can be faster, you can be cheaper, you can be you can target a different market client. There are a lot of things you know that you can do to, as uh, Rudy said, start test in Lebanon and then try to expand. And you know Dubai is beautiful, but the Levant too is a virgin market. So one of the pitches you know talked about expanding into Iran and into Palestine and those countries. Yes, opportunities, those are, yeah. opportunities, exactly. and they don't need deep pockets. Yeah, and going to the GCC or going to Saudi Arabia, you really need deep pockets. And uh, you know all the startups over there are financed. And you know this is one of the I guess backslashes of um, of Corona. At least this is how I see it. Because right, and uh, we put the technology evolved so fast. But you know, not everyone has um, can can afford it. Therefore, directly or indirectly, it's increasing uh, inequalities, you know, uh, among the people. So, um, so that's on that front. I forgot the chain of thought. Because I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe we have to talk about also investment, right? What do you think about investment? So um, at IAM, we're being very, very active. Last year, we closed uh, 12, uh, 11 investments. Uh, we disbursed twelve million dollars. Uh, we went very, uh, with just, all of what's happening. Yeah, we kicked off the process in September of 2020. So, you know, uh, Beirut uh, and Fajarit Minhon, we started working uh, from another side because we saw really the pain. As I said, we had 25 startups and we were seeing the pain every day. The money was literally stuck at the bank and those people wanted to pivot at least their, you know, their local revenues into, into um, the, the fresh dollars uh, revenue, and they just couldn't even execute their marketing plan. So this is when we said we have to go fast. And, and we were capitalists a little bit. I know you have to know that in times of crisis, valuations don't increase. So when you go super fast and you know that the company is going through a period of instability, for us, it's a great investment uh, pitch. So this is what we've done. 11 investments, $12 million. And now we're, so that was pure technology. Uh, the really beautiful stories. Uh, the fund was called SOS, so Save Our Startup Fund. Uh, we've invested six million fresh dollars ticket, but it, the tickets were a mix of fresh and dollar. This year we were dispersing another ten million dollars, all fresh, but it's going to be targeted to local manufacturing. It's not equity; it's you know mezzanine financing. So we're going outside the box a little bit to try to see how we can help out. However, it is ge geared toward growth. The majority over here are maybe asking about seed stage. Unfortunately, unfortunately. You know, today, let's forget about fresh and, you know, Lolar. I know whether you get a Lolar at market rate or, you know, you get a fresh ticket, it's somehow the same. However, all the investors are stuck with their money at the bank. And today, they're looking for opportunities to, to get it out there. I know it's already lost, Mike, at the banks. So today, and since a lot of people need, need a lot of capital, what they're doing is they have the choice today to handpick their investment. Like, you know, all the companies in Lebanon are in a hard need for, capi for capital. So then those sophisticated investors are actually available, but they're handpicking the growth. And for them, it's an easier bet instead of going to seed. However, you know, seed for us is, uh, is core. At IM, other than the VC and the growth tickets that we do, we manage angel network. So what we do is every year, we, um, we group around 20 to 25 executives, we pull their money, and we try to give it to, to, invest, in, to invest it in at least four to five startups per year. Uh, we have a 50% quota for women, for women. So that fund was operational for the past five years. Obviously, last year, Sarah Lisar, the group is still operation, uh, operational. The last pitch is next week. However, those people, it's, it's you know, very seed stage, idea stage. And had the, the, the women that are, and I, I was very happy to see that the majority are women. Chapeau, mm -hmm. Ibiya, it's, uh, <laughs> honestly, honestly. So even the ideas that we have over here are a little bit more advanced than what we're seeking. I know what we, what we had to do is 
turn our investment group from investment ticket to acceleration. So today we talk about acceleration, no more about angel investment, but that was 2020, 2021. Inshallah, next year we will be kicking it off, trying to attract again uh, a series of diaspora, which, you know, we need their money, Akid, but what we need mostly is their mentorship and their coaching. And no, I, I'm not going to talk on behalf of everyone, but Anna, for me, whoever, you know, went through whatever we went through for the past two years is half depressed. So we really need someone from the outside world to tell us how to go, how to do it, you know, how other people, how other countries went through it. And we'll see. We'll yeah, get that, there. There's a lot of, uh, you know, comp not competition, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Look at, look, yeah, challenges, thanks. Look at, you know, the challenges here. We have 114 startups, you know, and those are innovators. And, of course, they target to win. Uh, and that was the initial target. But all of them, for me, they, they've won, you know. In inclusive, they, we, they selected 10. But for me, you know, the innovation that they brought in, this is what we need, that spirit. Uh, you know, we always say we are Phoenicians and we are traders. I love trading, but I, I really need to start putting that innovation part in every one of us and then uh, try to grow it because all of the economies today, look at Tesla. Just give you a small example. Look at Tesla. Tesla is a car company for most of us. This is what we know. It's evaluated uh, more than all of the car industry combined, excluding Toyota. Uh, that's around $600 billion. And funny part is Tesla is not a car manufacturer. It's, for me, it's an innovation lab. You know, it's just ideas. If you look at what they have, they're not supposed to be evaluated at that percentage, of course. But the innovation that they're bringing, you know, they could have been somewhere else. Of course, they are located in the prime location. But this is what we want today, that to create that ecosystem of innovation and ideas. And uh, we've seen a couple of uh, great ideas, actually. Yeah. Uh, that are worth the investment. Uh, I'm sure many of you here are, you know, supporting them and then trying to maybe scale yourself and trying to uh, get uh, f access to fund. And this is where your role and uh, the role of this program and the competition and uh, it, it's going to help a lot. You know, thirty thousand dollars today, I think, from from Lebanon yeah. uh, will take you uh, quite far uh, with all of the challenges and all of the economical situation that we have. So. Uh, this is how we have to, you know, think, uh, again, going back to innovation, uh, driving innovation from within our heart and uh, making a society and, uh, you know, even on, in schooling, uh, getting back to uh, our core, uh, getting back to our young uh, educators or, uh, you know, the program that we have because our programs are outdated. Uh, that's another thing that we have to take care of in the education system. Uh, we are not born entrepreneurs, and we are not made entrepreneurs. Uh, but unfortunately, we can enhance it in multiple folds to create an ecosystem of uh, you know, free people that they can really dream and uh, create opportunities and create uh, startups. But in our DNA, entrepreneurial is not our you know, thing. We had 331, which kicked off something. Uh, with all of its, you know, success and failures, because it has it had a lot of failures also. We cannot talk about only on the success. But it kicked off something in Lebanon. Hopefully, uh, we have another fund, that a big fund. And uh, I think with all of the what's happening in Lebanon, economic situation, a big fund will take us somewhere else. Uh, and uh, getting all of those ecosystems together, you know, forming a big alliance and in unity, I, I really believe in unity, we can overcome all of the, uh, all of the situation and get access to uh, the non-privileged in our uh, Lebanon from the north to the south, which we are not tapping into their uh, capabilities. And I've seen you know, capabilities throughout Lebanon that are uh, really amazing, but unfortunately due to transportation, because they're not located in Beirut, most of the opportunities are here. So it's, it's tough uh, for them to be, to be with us, even to attend. Luckily, we have some hybrid, you know, they can be inspired and so on. But uh, that's one thing that we, uh, you know, we have to really uh, try to, you know, change a little bit of our DNA into something 
uh, more advanced than the uh, traditional uh, agro or you know, industrial bases. And this is where we need to go and think about the future. What does the future need? And where does the future want us to be? I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I hope the judges uh, got a good consensus. Yes, this is the most important part. Yeah. Congratulations to all. Uh, we wish you good luck. And really, you all are winners. Thank you so much, Mr. Rudy Shushani, uh, founder of the X Talks, and Ms. Corinne Yeme, venture capitalist and investment manager at uh, IM Ventures. And now the moment and of truth. I, be, I bet you all hearts are beating so hard. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to all our 10 innovators, 10 teams. I would like to invite President Fadlo Khouri to announce the winners. Also, I would like to invite on stage Mr. Mohammed Rabah and Dr. Youssef Asfour uh, also to, uh, for the picture and to announce the two winners. I think the three of us like to think of ourselves as, as decisive individuals, but this was actually quite difficult because all the projects had considerable merit. Um, and s including projects that did not rank in the top three, we think several projects need to be brought forward for consideration with uh, incubation other uh, approaches. So I'm going to start with the third place project AgTech. AgTech is a very inspiring project and actually was ranked very highly, as highly as anything. We believe this project is further along than uh, the means of the presidential, uh, the president's challenge. This is a project we believe is ready for innovation, for incubation and larger investment. And we'll be meeting with the uh, principal investigator, Dr. Jaffa, and his team of AgTech to figure out how the, what the next steps are with regard to investment in what we believe is a very important program. Uh, second is cloud. So we felt that uh, cloud really has a potential to have not just an environmental and sanitary, but a social impact in that it will help employ uh, Lebanese women and help grow the, the banana sector. So Damour was lucky today in other areas. So the first uh, prize winner is Poseidon Hydeo. Uh, we believe... 
that this, this is one of uh, multiple projects, but what we want is our dollars to go the furthest. And so Daniel and uh, colleagues, uh, the, one of the ideas is that this $30,000 is enough for you to prove your proof of concept or go back to the drawing board. But the opportunity to help lift off for an energy approach that is more efficient, cleaner, and potentially uh, completely more completely transformational for one of the most polluted countries in the region, if not the world, was one that we felt, in addition to the fine presentation, one that we should not pass up. So congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Um, uh, you're all winners today. We're very excited about you, and uh, we'll be following up with each of you to figure out next steps. Thank you again, and thank you, uh, judges. Thank you, Fireside Chat. Thank you, team. And most of all, thank you, competitors.